Hey guys, how are you doing? It's Elston Nation here. So, um, I'm going to go through the heavy support sections in the book because um, we're getting close to the end of going through all the rules and the units and this sort of thing. Then we can get into fluff stuff and like building armies and all kinds of cool stuff like that and looking at models. So, um, we're going to go through heavy support today. Heavy support is possibly the most fun section in Horus Heresy because there are so many options and so many cool things that you're not going to find in 40k. Um, so we're going to start off with the Death, uh, sorry, Death Storm Drop Pod. Um, it's a drop pod basically, and it has five Death Storm frag launchers. Um, it's got uh, independent machine spirits. That's interesting. It's got area denial, basically any successful morale checks or pinning tests caused by a Death Storm drop pod on the turn it arrives. Oh, sorry, on the turn it deploys must be re-rolled. So that can be nasty. Uh, inertial guidance system, basically it's the same as normal drop pods. Um, okay, uh, independent machine spirits basically means uh, it can fire at different targets with all of the weapons. So it can do split fire on everything, which is cool. Um, Death Storm Frag Launcher, uh, looks like it's got two firing modes. It's got a 48 inch range, strength 5, AP4, heavy 1, blast 3 inch and pinning. Uh, or Death Storm Crack Launcher, 48 inch range, strength 8, AP3, heavy 2. Um, if you want to do the crack launchers, you have to upgrade it, and that's 30 points. Um, um, also, if you want to, you can give it the drop pod assault special rule. So it comes in on first turn. So that could be nasty. Uh, yeah, I might have to get one of them. They look pretty cool. Haven't, haven't got any myself, so I don't know how they play. So, Legion Heavy Support Squad. Um, so basically how this works is, is a heavy support squad, you can have up to 10 guys. It, apart from the sergeant, if one of them takes a weapon, they all have to take the same heavy weapon. Um, the standard rules, power armor, heavy bolt, uh, bolt pistol, frag and crack grenades, Legion has the starties. Um, okay, so you can have up to 5. Um, and you can exchange the heavy bottles for heavy flamers, auto cannons, missile launcher with frag and crack missiles, multi melter, plasma cannon, volkite culverin, and las cannon. Um, again, if you swap out one, they've all got to swap them out. Um, what you'll also find as well, it becomes pr quite pricey, especially if you can do like las cannons. So if you want to swap them out, each person has to pay for a las cannon upgrade. So for five guys, that's 100 points. Add another five guys that's another hundred points and then add another five last cannons to fill up those five guys is another hundred points so you're looking at 300 points extra to equip a 10-man last cannon squad so you're looking at 435 points for a 10-man last cannon squad which is brutal but anything that shoots at will die uh, the squad sergeant can take combat blade, artificer armor, augury scanner, melter bombs. Um, you can take bolt, uh, combi weapon. Uh, you can have a plasma pistol. Uh, uh, just if the squad sergeant's not carrying a heavy weapon, he can have a power weapon or a power fist. Um, if they take missile launchers, they can take uh, flak missiles. So you could have ten anti-air guys. Um, and the entire squad may take hardened armor for 25 points. Um, so yeah, heavy support squads, highly recommend them. You're probably going to use them in 40k. Uh, what you'll have to decide is what you're going to equip them with. Um, also remember heavy flamers are assault weapons as well, so they can dump out and you can have 10 heavy flamers hits. That's pretty horrible. It's pretty hard to not hit your own guys though if you do that. You've got to kind of go in this kind of like semicircle thing otherwise they hit each other so moving on predator strike armor squadron so yes predators come in squadrons you get a bunch of three predators uh they're same so their front armor 13 side armor 11 rear armor 10 three hull points bs4 uh so they have searchlight smoke launcher and predator cannon now predator cannon uh, if you remember from the rules is a four shot auto cannon not a two shot so it's a four shot which is cool. Uh, they don't come with sponsors as standard. If you want sponsors, you have to take them. You can have heavy bolters, heavy flamers, or you can have last cannons. Um, uh, 
Uh, the, it can exchange its Predator Cannon for a Flamestorm Cannon. If I remember right, it's Strength 6, AP 3. A uh, Heavy Conversion Beamer and a Magna Melter Cannon. So, yeah, choose which one you want out of that. Oh, sorry, Executioner Plasma Destroyer. That one's quite important, actually, because a lot of people take that one. Um, yeah, that's brutal. Uh, they can have Hunter Killer Missile, Dozer Blade, Auxiliary Drive, Extra Armor, Armored Ceramite, Machine Spirit. Uh, yeah, you pay for Machine Spirit. Um, da, 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 da. And you can have pencil mounted weapons as well, so you can have a Combi Bolter, Combi Weapon, Heavy Flamer, Heavy Bolter, Havoc Launcher, and one of them may be upgraded to a Command Tank as well. So yeah, uh, they're running at 70 for 5 points each. So it's not bad if you want some extra armor on the board. Three Predators, it's quite a good way to go. Um, if you're sticking with Flamestorm Cannons, yeah, they'll melt pretty much any power armor. Uh, plasma Destroyers seem to be one of the more common ones I tend to see because it's pretty brutal. Magnum Melt, not so much. It's an only an 18 inch range. And if you want the melt, you have to be within 9 inches. So... And it's scattered, so it could possibly scatter onto yourself. So that's why Magnum Metal is not so great. Land Raider Battle Squadrons. Yeah, squadrons of Land Raiders. And there's three different types. So you've got Land Raider Phobos, Land Raider Proteus, and Land Raider Achilles. So uh, Phobos is the one with the assault ramp. Uh, Proteus doesn't have the assault ramp, that's the old school style one. And the Achilles is the one that has got like a Thunderfire cannon in front of it. Um, so the Assault Ramp one's 250. The Proteus non-assault ramp is 200. And the Achilles is 275. Uh, they're all standard 14, 14, 14. The whole point's four. Um, <laughs> uh, one to three Land Raiders of any which may be Phobos, Proteus types and up to one of which may be an Achilles site. So you can't have an entire squadron of Achilles Land Raiders, you can only have one Achilles out of the squadron. Um, mm -mm -mm. Uh, the Phobos can carry 10, the Proteus can carry 10, the Achilles can carry six models. Uh, fire points, none. Brackets, all. Okay. Uh, land Raiders have one access point on each side of the hull, and in addition, Land Raider Phobos has one at the front. Makes sense. Land Raider Phobos is an assault vehicle, Land Raider Proteus has none, Land Raider Achilles, uh, Ferromantic Invulnerability. Uh, I'm sure that's in the special rules, it's over here actually. Yeah, there's like two pages for Land Raiders on this one. Um, so Phobos comes with uh, twin link last cannon, a whole mount of twin link bolt, heavy bolter, uh, searchlight, smoke launches, machine spirit. Uh, Proteus comes with last cannons, searchlight, smoke launches, and uh, machine spirit. And Phobos comes with one hole mounted quad mortar, two sponsor mounted twin link uh, multi melters, searchlight, smoke launchers, extra armor, machine spirit, and armored ceramite. So an Achilles is going to be a lot harder to kill. Um, and it can pump out a bit more firepower as well. Um, okay, all land raiders. Uh, <laughs> any land raider may take. Uh, any of the following, if not already equipped. Okay, so yeah, Hunter Killer Missile, Dozer Blade, Auxiliary Drive, Extra Armor, and Armored Ceramite. So you can make all your Land Raiders immune to Melter, which is quite cool. Um, any Land Raider can take the following Pintle Mounted Weapons, Twin Link Bolter, Combi Weapon, Heavy Flamer, Havoc Launcher, Heavy Bolter, Multi Melter. Now uh, Pintle Mounted Heavy uh, Multi Melter is running around as well. Um, so if you've got a Squadron of Three, you can have one of them up upgraded to a Command Tank. Uh, additional options, uh, the Phobos can have uh, Frag Assault Launchers, um, Ladder Proteus, any model further armed, one of the following hull mounted weapons, Twin Linked Heavy Bolter, Twin Linked Heavy Flamer, uh, okay, any model may be upgraded, upgraded to be equipped with Explorator Augury Web, I don't know what that is. Okay, so if you got the Explorator Augury Web, it gains the Scout Special Rule. Uh, while a Proteus with this upgrade is on the table at the start of any of the controlling players' turns before reserve rolls are made, they may declare that the Proteus Auguries are being used to, in disruption or relay modes, um, their effects lasting until the next player turn. Disruption mode, the opposing forces suffer minus one to their reserve rolls. That's quite handy. 
I did, forgot about that. It's quite expensive though, it's 50 points for this thing. Real ammo, the owning player's reserve rolls may be re-rolled, uh, whether failed or successful if they wish. Note that the presence of a multiple exploratory web equipped Proteus have no additional effect and only one mode may be chosen a turn. Um, okay, if it does take that, its uh, transport capacity is reduced to 8. And then we've got Ferromantic and Vulnerability. Okay. As a result, the Land Raider Achilles is not subject to the particular effects of Lance and Melter special rules by attacks made against it. In addition, it reduced the effects of all rolls on the vehicle damage chart caused by penetrating hits other than by uh, destroyer type weaponry by minus one. So yeah, Achilles are really hard to kill. Okay, moving on. We've got the Fire Raptor, one of my favorite things. Um, so front side, uh, arm, front side rear armor 12, four hull points, BS4, Fire Raptor gunship vehicle, one hull mounted twin linked Avenger bolt cannon, two turret mounted quad heavy bolters, four wing mounted Tempest rockets, machine spirit, extra armor, deep strike, strafing run, independent turret fire, none. Uh, it can uh, exchange its heavy bolts for a Reaper auto cannon battery. Pretty nasty. Armored Ceramite. Uh, kind of searchlight. Can take four Hellstrike missiles. Uh, independent turret fire means the turrets on the side can fire independently and shoot at different targets. Um, Tempest rockets are 60 inch range, strength 6, AP4, heavy 1, Sunder 1 shot. Avenger bolt cannon, we've gone through that. Quad heavy bolt is 36 inch range, strength 5, AP4, heavy 6, twin linked. Reaper auto cannon, 36 inch range, uh, strength 7, AP4, heavy 4, twin linked. And you can have one of them on each side. Brutal. Right, just going to take a quick jump cut and then we'll be right back. Sorry about that guys. Right, okay, so we're back. Um... Achilles, uh, Achilles Alpha Pattern Land Raider. Um, what have we got on here that's different to the other one? Okay. So, okay, so it's got one hole mounted quad mortar with frag and shatter shells. Okay, so that's a bit different. T sponsor mounted twin link Volkite culverins. Okay, thanks. So. Um, galvanic traction drive. I don't know what that is, we'll find out in a second. Okay, it's got one access point each side of the hole. So, it's got the same stuff as the normal Achilles, but it seems to have a bit more. It's 300 points instead of 275. Um, uh, okay, so this one's got a bit more. So, it says the usual thing about the Melter and the Lance. Uh, note that this reduction is applied to any AP value that would first add to this roll rather than the final result where this is appropriate. So for example, an AP1 attack which would normally gain a 2 plus modifier to the damage roll instead would only gain a 1 plus. So uh, yeah, basically if you hit this with a strength, uh, sorry, an AP2 weapon, you can't destroy it outright unless you glance it off the table. That's pretty nasty. But yeah, that's the same for it. Uh, galvanic dra traction drive. The Achilles Alpha must reroll failed dangerous terrain test. That's handy. Uh, the quad mortar. So the frag version of it 12 inch to 60 inch, strength 5, AP 5, heavy 4 barrage blast, 3 inch shell shock, shatter, 36 inch range. Strength 8, AP4, Heavy 4, Sunder. So yeah. Might ever look into getting one of these. They sound cool. They sound fun. Uh, Legion Artillery Tank Squadron. Now this is where it gets interesting. You don't get these in 40k. You can have a Basilisk, a Medusa, or a Legion Whirlwind. Um, 1 to 3 tanks chosen from one of the following types. Whirlwind, Basilisk, or Medusa. Now the way you read that makes it sound like you could have all three, um, depending on how you read it. I'll, I'll allow people make up their minds on what they want to do. Uh, so war gear, basilisk, earth shaker cannon, hull mounted heavy bolt of smoke launcher and searchlight. Um, uh, Medusa, Medusa siege gun, hull mounted heavy bolt of smoke launcher and searchlight. 
War Gear for the Whirlwind, Whirlwind Launcher with Vengeance and Castellan Missiles, Norman 8 which type do you use each time the launcher fires, Smoke Launcher, Twin Link Bolter and Searchlight. Um, the Basilisk and Medusa are front armor 12, side armor 10, rear armor 10. The Whirlwind is front armor 11, side armor 11, rear armor 10. All with three hull points. They're going to have a Hunter Killer Missile, Dozer Blade, Auxiliary Drive, Extra Armor. They can also have a Pintle Mounted Twin Link Bolter. And if there's three of them, one of them can be upgraded to a Command Tank. Um, also for the Whirlwind, it can take Hyperius Air Defense Missiles for free. Why wouldn't you? Just makes it funny. Okay, Legion Vindicator. So, 120 points. Pretty much the same as a 40k one, front armor 13, side armor 10, rear armor 10. It's got a demolisher cannon, it's got a combi bolter on top. Um, okay, so it can swap out its demolisher cannon for a laser destroyer array for 10 points if it wants. It can have a hunter killer missile, dozer blade, auxiliary drive, extra armor, armored ceramite, and machine spirit. That's interesting. Uh, you can also have pencil mounted weapons, combi bolter, combi weapon, heavy flamer, heavy bolter, and havoc launcher. So you can have even more stuff on top of it. So, yeah, not a bad choice. The Spartan. This one's brutal. Everyone should take a Spartan in their Legion army. Because they're nigh on indestructible. Unless you glance them off the table, even that's hard. So, front armor 14, side armor 14, rear armor 14, land raider stats. Hold points 5. 295 points. It is a vehicle tank. A vehicle type is vehicle tank transport. Uh, two sponsor mounted quad lads cannons. Hole mounted twin linked heavy bolter. Searchlight, smoke launchers, machine spirit, and extra armor. Uh, the Spartan has a transport capacity of 25 models. It's got extra armor. I didn't realize that. I think that means it ignores certain crew shaking or crew stamp, I believe. Uh, the Spartan has one access point at the front and two on the side. It's also an assault vehicle. It can exchange its last cannons for laser destroyers for free. Okay, didn't know that. Um, it can exchange its whole mounted twin linked heavy bolter for a twin linked heavy flamer. That's quite nasty. It can take counter killer missile, auxiliary drive, armored ceramite. Pretty much certainly going to do that. Flare shield. Definitely want that and those are blade. Flare shield basically means if you're shooting at it at the front arc, it's minus one strength to your weapon. If you're shooting it with a blast, it's minus two strength. Um, so basically, you can only glance it with last cannons if you're shooting at the front. That's pretty brutal. Uh, you can also take pencil mounted weapons, twin link bolter, combi weapon, heavy flamer, havoc launcher, heavy bolter, multi melter. And it can also take frag assault launchers. Spartans are awesome. Take them with flare shield and armored ceramite. Pretty much, it's a winner. If you need to get your troops somewhere, this is it. Um, what does it say? The transport capacity. Oh yeah, sorry. Transport capacity: twenty-five models. Twenty-five. <laughs> okay, Legion Cestus assault round. This one's fun. I just got one of these as well. Uh, so it's BS4, front armor 13, side armor 13, rear armor 11, hull points 4. Uh, it is a unit type, it's vehicle, tank, um, brackets, flyer, hover, and transport. Uh, it can carry 10 models, see your special rules. Okay. It has two access points at the front of the hull, one twin linked. Hole mounted uh, magnum melter, armored ceramite, extra armor, two wing mounted havoc launchers, and machine spirit. Now the magnum melter on the Cessna assault arm is actually amazing because the simple fact you're shooting at the ground so it can't scatter onto yourself, which is awesome. Uh, it's an assault vehicle. It's got misery cord, Cestus ram, and deep strike. Okay, know that even though the Cestus is a fly, it may choose to ram just as if it were a tank. This attack must be declared at the start of the Cestus movement phase. Okay, so yeah, this thing can ram. That's quite cool. It can have frag assault launches, it can have auxiliary drive, uh, it can exchange its havoc launches for 
two wing mounted missile launchers, uh, frag and crack missiles. I'd probably do that. Yeah, why not? I have missile launchers on the side of it. That'd be funny. Mm. Okay, so Cestus Ram. So basically, it's saying it's tough as hell. When conducting a ram attack, the Cestus uh, controlling player can roll two dice and pick the higher number when determining if it has penetrated the target's armor and add plus one to any rolls on the vehicle damage chart that it uses. You want to smash this thing into stuff. I'm going to be doing that. In addition, the Cessus Ram has an invulnerable save of 5 plus against any attacks against its front armor, including any damage it suffers as a result of carrying out a ram or being rammed itself from the front. I didn't know it had a 5 plus invulnerable save from the front. That's awesome. I'm going to be so happy flying this thing around. Um, okay, so Misericord. Okay. As a result, the Cessna Assault Ram has a transport capacity of 10 models, but may only transport models in Power Armor, Artificer Armor, or Terminator Armor, the latter of which do not count as having the bulky special rule in this specific instance. So that means you can carry 10 Terminators. That's awesome. I'm going to use this thing to smash into people. Because this is going to be funny. Yeah, I should have got one of them a long time ago. Okay, Sikaran Venator Tank Destroyer, 190 points, front armor 13, side armor 12, rear armor 12, 3 hull points. Oh, uh, what's it got? Searchlight, smoke launcher, pistol mounted heavy bolt, hull mounted neutron beam laser and extra armor. It can have a hunter killer, missile dozer, blade, auxiliary drive armor, ceramite. Uh, it can also have heavy bolt sponsons or las cannon sponsons. Uh, the neutron beam laser is a range 36, strength 10, AP1, ordnance 2, ordnance 2, concussive shock pulse, shock pulse, any vehicle including super heavy vehicles that suffers a penetrating hit from a weapon with this rule may only fire snapshots on the following game turn. I didn't know that either, those things are amazing. Um, also it's a tank and it's fast so it means it can move 12 inches and still fire a weapon. That's crazy. Okay you've also got dangerous reactor core. If an enemy, or if an enemy unit inflicts a penetrating hit on a Scarigan Venator, uh, Venator, then they may re-roll results of a 1 on the vehicle damage table against it. In addition, should it suffer an explosion result, add D3 inches to the explosion radius. Oh. So yeah, if you hit this thing and you penetrate it, you got a bad chance of blowing up. So you've got a Sakaran Sikar Battle Tank, which is it's like counterparts, so 100 100 and 35 points. Uh, you get searchlight, smoke launchers, twin link, accelerator, auto cannon, heavy bolt on the front, and extra armor. You can have the same stuff as the other one. Accelerator, auto cannons, 48 inch range, strength 7, AP4, heavy 6, rending, rapid tracking. Uh, rapid tracking basically means you don't get jinx saves against it because it's fast and it can see you pretty good. So, yeah, these two definitely worth their money. So, uh, I expect to see a lot more of these as the game progresses. Uh, then we've got Legion Charybdis Assault Claw. Um, okay, so I haven't really read up on this thing. It's got front, side, and rear armor 12. It's got five hull points. It's a flyer, transport, and it's got hover. Uh, it's got five Charybdis Storm Launchers. Uh, it's got a Melter Ram. I don't even know what that is. Frag Assault Launchers. It's an assault vehicle, drop pod assault, inertial guidance system, independent machine spirits, and heat blast. Heat blast, we've gone over that, I'm pretty sure. Um, yep. Heat blast, yep. Melt around. Uh, although a fly, the crypt disc may conduct ram attacks if it is, as if it were a tank while using hover mode. It may not, however, ram other flyers or make such an attack on any turn in which it arrives from reserve. It also may not conduct uh, a ram on any other turn in which it embarks or disembarks models or uses its heat blast attack. Okay, that's fair enough. Uh, and then you've got a Charybdis Storm, storm Launcher, so it's got five of these. It's Strength 4, AP 6, sorry, Range 24, Strength 6, AP 5, Heavy 2, Pinning Twin Linked. So yeah, that's going to pump out some fire. Um, 
transport capacity. Okay, so it can transport 20 models. Um, or can be used to transport a single dreadnought of any type or a unit of rapier carrier teams. Okay, it's got one hole access beneath the thing. Fair enough. Um, got one more. Legion Whirlwind Scorpius, so slightly different whirlwind. It's 115 points. Front armor 13, side armor 12, rear armor 10. Three hull points. Searchlight Smoke Launcher, Scorpius Multi Launcher, and Twin Link Bolter. Hunter Killer Missile, Dozer Blade Extra Armor, the options you get with it. So the Scorpius Multi Launcher, this one's cool. It's range 48 inch, strength 8, AP3, Heavy 1 Barrage, Blast 3 inch, Rocket Barrage. Okay, so. In a turn in which this vehicle has not moved, the multi-launcher rate of fire is increased to heavy 1 plus D3. So you could potentially fire out 4 shots. These things are awesome, and they don't cost a lot. I'm going to have 3 of them, because I'm a bugger. And that is the end of the heavy support section. So yeah, you've got a lot of options, a lot of things to play with. Um, after this I'm going to go back and we're going to have a look at the HQ section and see what you can do there and then we'll go on to the Lords of War and then we'll start having some fun we'll start having a look at some other bits and bobs Legion fluffy bits possibly even the Mechanicum Solar Auxilia all the kind of fun bits and bobs and stuff like that so that's it for this episode guys thank you very much for watching take it steady and I'll catch you on the next one bye bye